Well, hello, beloved students. Um, so excited to get started <clears throat> on this new uh, teaching series. We're going to be going through the first few books of Genesis and calling it Beauty and Creation. Um, just looking at the beauty of what God has made, and I figured <laughs> let's try doing it outside. And uh, there's going to be some background noise, I'm sure. Um, but just to kind of be in what God has created. Um, which I guess is going to include some cars driving by and stuff like that uh, for this recording. But um, we're going to be reading um, through the CSB translation, which is the primary translation the church uses. Um, but I'm also going to be using the ESV study Bible um, for some reading and referencing as well. So to get started, we just want to look first at the idea of God in creation. And um, before we do that, let's just start off with some prayer. And Lord God, we thank you. Uh, for your word that it is true um, and we thank you for these first few chapters in Genesis that give us an account of in some way of how you orchestrated and created this world and so Lord as we dig into this may we see you through it most of all um, Lord sure there are things that are interesting and that we can get lost in um, but Lord I pray that your beauty um, would shine through this more than anything so Lord be with us be with our conversation um, as I share from your word. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, so where do we start? We start on Genesis 1 1. And all right, there we go. <laughs> so, Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the waters, or the surface of the watery depths, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So before, before we get into any of the creation uh, days, <clears throat> what do we see? In the beginning, so at the start of it all, God created. And so we see here a truth about God uh, in, in, in the scriptures that God was there before creation, that he created what we know. And before that was just simply God. And so, yes, there's this, well, like, where did God come from? Or who created God? And th those, God did not have a beginning. He was simply there. He has always existed. Um, that's one of the doctrines of God is that he exists. That he has just always been there. And it's a mystery that we must um, acknowledge, but we can just marvel at, at the idea that he has just always been there. And so what do we see at the beginning of the scripture he's given us? In the beginning. So as far as we're concerned, this is the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. You could also say that God created the universe. Um, could be another way. Um, to look at that as well. And then in verse 2 we see, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And so there is some interesting thing pieces here because it seems like, like he's already created in, in this point something <laughs> and, and you know again this isn't a historical scientific account it's not necessarily saying like every you know verse is in a certain order um, and so I'm not trying to make any statements as to the exact order and time frame um, we're not going to get that from these scriptures you can debate the days and as we get into that you know we'll talk briefly about that but this isn't meant to be an exact date but I do find it interesting that it says God created the heavens and the earth and then it says the earth was formless and empty. So something was there. There was not yet this, um, you know, earth as we know it. And then it says darkness covered the surface of the watery depths. Now I want to read this uh, as well from the ESV, just to get the different perspectives um, on it here. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, 
and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So we see that there was no content, like God had created, but there was nothing there yet. So this is what I want us to see here. If we can imply by these first two verses that God has already done some creating, like how majestic if he's already created the heavens and the earth, the entire universe and everything that is in it. Isn't that like power? Like to create all of this. There is a ball of dirt and possibly water of some sort that is just in space. <clears throat> but he hasn't done things that we would say are beautiful. Like he, he hasn't he hasn't started to speak these these beautiful things. And so in verse three we see then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was an evening, and there was a morning, one day. And so we see at this this start of it all, he God has always been there. He's always existed in perfection. And he he creates this universe, the heavens and the earth, with great power. And then he's like, let me make it beautiful. Let me create light so that you can see what I'm going to create. Because we see in verse 2, the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Like, Like, God's already there. He's already creating. And it's powerful. (laughs) But he didn't stop there. I guess is what I'm trying to show you is that God could show his power by just simply creating a heavens and an earth. But he's like, let me create light. Let me create it so you can see all that I'm going to continue to create and watch the beauty in everything that I create. And so it's his beauty and creation, this story that he is starting here in the beginning. And we know God has existed for eternity, and so he existed before this moment. So it was not God's beginning, but it's him telling us, hey, I'm writing this story in the beginning. I created and it's majestic and it's powerful and it's huge and you're never going to be able to fully grasp and see the depths of what I'm creating. But so you can see some of it. I'm going to create light. And so that's why I want you guys to see and, and just try to grasp that weightness of God that He created all of this and He created light so that we can see what He's created. Like, we we take that for granted. We can see, we can look around. I can look around right now, and I can see what he will create because of that. And so as we take this and just kind of apply it, I also want you to, like, think about that idea of light. Think about the idea of being able to see and that before he created light, there was darkness. Um, And so it seems to be, that seems to be kind of like what the default was. this absence of light. And so no one, God comes in and he starts his creation work. He starts with this idea of light. And in our lives, um, we, um, we are surrounded maybe by dark things and we struggle with them and they seem to overtake us. And we may get frustrated as to God, what is all this that you're doing? Or where, where are you, I guess, is the question. And, you know, why am I struggling with all these things? And realize that he created the light and, and, and he needs to come into our life. We need to see him. And so my plea is that we live in a dark world, but God has created light. And we'll dig way more into this, but we're going to see the poetic nature of this as it continues, that the light is going to be Jesus Christ that comes in the world, the light of the world. Um, casting away darkness and so we see that echoed already here in the first few verses of Genesis 
So if there's things that you're struggling with in your life and you're like, I, I need to fix this, I need to fix this, I can't overcome this, of course you can't. We're in darkness. You need God, you need Christ to be your love. And so I'm hoping that through this, we will begin to see the beauty of Christ, the beauty of God, and that, that seeing that beauty would help us see that He is worth everything. And that these dark, this darkness inside of us can be overcome by Him and Him alone. And that this would build in us some desire to just pursue and love Him, to want to wake up and just spend time with Him. So that is my prayer. Let me pray for um, us and then we'll close out here. Lord God, we thank you now for your word that you created lights so that we can see. And Lord, we know that is a, a time in creation when you were creating things and creating um, scientific principles that we would study today. Lord, we know there's a lot there. Um, but Lord, I also know that continuing today, Lord, we can see um, this evidence of light and, and how it works and how it operates and we can get a, a, an echo, a, a, a poetic symbol of how this also works in our life, that you come in as the light and you cast out darkness. So I pray that you would be with us, shape us, heal us, free us from ourselves. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.